Aloha everyone, Michelle Melendez of Blossom Inner Wellness. I am doing another video on the um, soon to, well, hopefully not soon to be released, but the Hawaii Agriculture Department has approved the uh, mosquito injected with the Wolbachia bacterium to be released in the general public, in the ge general population. Um, without any long-term studies of the effects of people, of the effects of birds and animals, which they are trying to save with this um, new release, and on the effects of the environment, of what this will cause. I'm asking all social media people to please share this video and please um, uh, a, uh, send a testimony to the, um, let me get this right, uh, send a testimony again this telling them telling these people to not to do this to the hdoa.board.testimony at hawaii.gov if you care about hawaii at all you will um please support us in this because i'm going to be sharing with you guys why uh so people may think that okay so what they want to do is they want to release a male now male mosquitoes do not bite and females do um, they want to release the male mosquitoes injected with the Wolbachia bacterium that is incompatible with the female so that the eggs don't, um, don't uh, um, get fertilized. So this may be like, oh, Michelle, that's a great idea. Here's the problem. If a female mosquito gets out with a Wolbachia bacterium that sterilizes eggs, we don't have any long-term studies of what happens to humans if she bites them, I mean, we might be talking about the human race right now. You know, uh, we've all seen horror sci-fi films, and this is definitely one in the making. No long-term studies are on this of what happens if a female gets out. No long-term studies on what happens to the animals if, if they get bitten. So I've already said that. So let me, let me get to the studies that I want to show you guys, and I'm going to do a screen share um, right here. So sharing my screen, there we go, one, two, three. And the first one I want to show you guys is um, this one right here. Uh, okay, so this is from the Hawaii Department of Agriculture's um, uh, Hawaii.gov, and there's um, some questions being asked, and one of them is, have batches of mosquitoes, um, where is the one about mos uh, females? Have female mosquitoes been uh, collected from the environment. So have female mosquitoes, have they been, been gotten out? And here's what they said. Um, okay, I need to slow down. In our Singapore, so I'm on the second paragraph, uh, third line, fourth line. In our Singapore collaboration, we identified a very small number of released females. It was actually three females in batches comprised of several million males. Uh, so they did get out, and here's what happened. The, uh, they actually, in Singapore, they actually um, stopped broadcast. They actually um, ir irritated them. So they irritated these females. Three females got out in Singapore, and they, were ab they, they had a protocol in place. If females get out, this is what we do. So they ir irritated the, uh, the insect population uh, of where they were at. And luckily, that certain population, mosquito population, didn't uh, get a hold and, and start to reproduce in a really big way. So they were able to stop it. Here's the thing. Hawaii has no plan if a female gets out to do anything about it. They're just saying it's not going to happen. They're saying, oh, there's a very small chance this is going to happen, so let's not have a plan in place in case it does. There's nothing. So they're just, they're just playing God, playing Mother Nature, and saying everything's going to work out. When has that ever happened, ever, in the history of any scientific experiment? Because that's what this is. This is a scientific experiment with no plan if anything goes wrong. And all of those of you who love visiting Hawaii, all of those who live in Hawaii, like myself, uh, we have got to stand up to this because if they put this out with no plan in place, if anything goes wrong, that goes on us, pretty much literally the chance, the possibility that our children's children, children will never see the light of day is, is, is a good possibility. So let me share another thing with you guys. <sighs> Screen share, three, two, one. This, another, this other one is from um, 
uh, they, so here's the thing that they want to do. They want to um, put this out because they believe that the birds, our native birds, are dying off because of viruses that these mosquitoes uh, give to them. But here's the thing. While Bacchia bacterium actually enhances West Nile virus, so check this out. So I'm in um, this abstract uh, that is talking about this. Well, Bach, so here it goes. I am in uh, the third, fourth line down. We evaluated the effects of Wolbachia on infected dissemination and transmission of West Nile virus in the uninfected mosquito, um, which is an, okay, an important West Nile virus vector in North America. Okay. After inoculation into adult female mosquitoes, and again, uh, well, I'll tell you that in a second. While Bakia reached high titters and, dis, uh, and disseminated widely to numerous tissues, including the high head, thoracic, flight muscles, fat body, and ovarian follicles. Contrary to other systems, contrary to other systems, while Bakia did not inhibit West Nile virus in, these, in this mosquito, rather West Nile virus infection rate was significantly higher and while Bacchia infected mosquitoes compared to controls. Oh my gosh, okay? That's saying they're wanting to have these mosquitoes go out because they're hoping that it, it brings the mosquito population down because the mosquitoes are, back, um, are infecting the birds and killing the birds with certain diseases. This new strand, if a female gets out, which they have no plan of anything to do, if she does, she's going to increase West Nile, the possibility of, of getting West Nile that affects your head, your thoracic, your, your uh, sex organs, and various other parts of the body. So the very thing that they're wanting to release this mosquito for is contrary to what their goal is. So it's saying that the West Nile has, an, has a higher rate, a higher increase. So, oh my gosh, like, this is mind blowing. So the last thing I want to share with you guys is um, about uh, a horizontal gene transfer. So you want to create a new species, a completely different species. Well, here's how to do it. So this is a horizontal gene transfer between Wolbachia and the mosquito um, Aedes, and I'm just going to call that a regular, the regular mosquito. I don't. Um, so yes, okay. So the results we have discovered a case of of um, horizontal gene transfer involving two adjacent genes between the genomes of Wolbachia and the current Wolbachia uninfected mosquito. So the uninfected mosquito, okay, the lower level of stuff is, okay, where I wanted to read, okay, and the fact that uh, we have identified, okay, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you guys, let me just, I'm a little, okay, the lower level of sequence identity between the Wolbachia insect and the transcription of all the genes involved and the fact that we have identified homologs of the two genes in another, this is the uninfected mosquito, suggests that these genes are being expressed after an extended evolutionary period since horizontal transfer and therefore the transfer of functional significance. The data support the argument that horizontal gene transfer between Wolbachia endosymbiotic bacteria and their hosts has produced an evolutionary innovation. What does that mean, Michelle? Michelle, what does that mean? It means that there is a new species that is being created after an evolutionary period. So this is, isn't this, this is like, so science, the horror, fi horror film sci-fi of the year award is that that's what this is. So basically, they're they're wanting to release in Hawaii. Um, they want to release this mosquito. They have no protocols if a mosquito if a female mosquito gets out because they're saying it's not going to happen. This mosquito um, has a higher rate of transferring uh, the West Nile virus. It has a um, very high rate of, of, uh, of horizontal gene transfer to create a completely new species, which we don't even know what that would be. There are no long-term studies of what the effects of, of human beings if this female mosquito gets out and starts to reproduce and bites humans. There's no long-term studies of, of how this mosquito will affect the birds that these people are trying to save. There's no long-term studies of how this will affect the environment 
considering some birds uh, or some species like bats eat mosquitoes. So um, this is, uh, we need your help. We need people to start to write to the board and tell them, don't do this. No, we do not want this. We need this on news, uh, news places. And here's why. Here's another reason why, why we, we need this out. They, we had testimony, 102 people opposed this happening, 102 people. 25 people supported it. 16 of the 25 people who supported it were working for government agencies. Eight of those 16 were late testimonies. Of the eight that were late, five of them worked for the Hawaii Agriculture Department. So we're talking nine regular people called in and supported this, not working for government agencies. 101 opposed this saying, basically, we need more studies. We want a full spectrum study, uh, environmental study on the effects of this, of the effects of people if a, if a female gets out. We also um, want uh, long-term studies because Hawaii is uh, islands in the Pacific. And we have invasive species that have been brought here to the Hawaii Islands that have changed the environment forever. Like there's koki frogs here that, that you, Hawaii used to be very, very quiet, especially the big island used to be very, very quiet. No koki frogs. Koki frogs sound like a bird chirping. And they start at nighttime and they chirp all the way through the night. And, it, it, um, and there used to be none, but they were actually brought in, uh, in as an invasive species. And I can't remember the whole story. There's different stories of why. Mongoose were brought in to Hawaii. Hawaii had no mongoose at all. And they were brought in to uh, kill the rats. Only problem is the rats are nocturnal and the mongoose are out in daytime. They, know, they never met. So now we have a huge population of mongoose, which the mongoose eat the bird eggs. So how about start, a, how about start eradicating more, more mongoose? You might have more birds, not, not the mosquitoes. So those are just two invasive species to the Hawaii Islands. This is an invasive species that can and would, in my opinion, very much so, not only change the entire, entire environment of Hawaii, but be a danger to people coming and visiting the Hawaii Islands, as well as people here, as well as our um, human population. We don't know what this will do because there's no long-term studies. So I am asking people to help us. Please, if, you've, if you love the Hawaii Islands, if you've ever wanted to visit but you haven't, please support us by writing to the um, Hawaii Department of Agriculture. I uh, send the, the, the email below. And if you are a news media, um, uh, we are happy to do interviews. I'm happy to do an interview. There's other people that would be happy to do interviews. I, uh, scientists, well, I, I hope you guys are supporting us in, in just long-term studies. We have a right to keep our islands safe and our people and our keiki, our children safe from the only, the only insect to actually give people diseases that, they, that can kill them. So please, I'm asking all around the world, support Hawaii Islands, uh, bring aloha back, uh, not only to us, but to you as well, because we can do this together. Much love, everyone. And no matter what, in fact, I'm just going to do a prayer because, I, I, because that's what I do. I do prayers. So thank you, Heavenly source of all things, infinite intelligence. We know that this is a game we're all playing, this being in a human body and having this human experience together. We know that through the darkness that there is light and that that light is through you, infinite intelligence of all things. We know that our hearts are beating just like you are beating our hearts and breathing our body, just as you are moving the sun slowly across the sky and running the tides in the ocean and germinating the plants in the soil, letting them know where to grow to the light. We know that you are with us. And we just bring so much gratitude for you, infinite intelligence, that uh, allows us to have this human experience of experiencing love, of experiencing fear and darkness, and moving through it, moving through it to the light and the love of you, infinite great spirit, of showing and, and uniting with all human beings, uniting with each other in a collective embrace of love and of peace and of harmony. And right now, we just ask 
that your guidance guide each one of us to do what is our kuleana, what is, what, what is our responsibility, what is the reason why we came here to have a human experience, that you give us the courage to do what we know to be right, that you give us the strength to endure this time, because we know, we know that the light has won. We know that we are living in harmony and in unity and in love and in peace all around the world. We know that that is coming. We know that that is in directly in our timeline, that we will be living in harmony and truth and in love through you, great spirit of all that is. And we just ask for the guidance to, to do what we know to be right. And we just ask for anyone that has malicious intent against human beings and against the safety of humanity, that their hearts be turned to the light and that they do what they know to be right. Not, not what other people are telling them to do, not what money is telling them to do, but what they know in their hearts to be right through you, great spirit, that is pumping even their hearts and beating their hearts and pumping a gallon of blood through the, their body, breathing their lungs, running their entire body systems, which literally is a miracle. The body is a miracle that you created, great spirit, infinite intelligence of all things. And through you, we give so much gratitude because we know that the darkness, the darkness cannot stand through the light. It cannot be there. And we are the light. We are the love. We are the truth together. We are unified in a, in a world of peace and of harmony. And we are beating with one heartbeat of humanity, synchronized together in harmony with all of humanity, pulsating a frequency out into the galactic field that this planet is free, that all sentient beings are safe, and that all sentient beings are loved beyond measure, beyond anything really our human bodies can even fathom. And we give so much gratitude for the spiritual, emotional expansion through the darkness back into the light. And it is done, great spirit. And we just ask that anybody that hears this prayer and is touched with their heart to do, to take action, that they write to the board, that the board sees this and says, wait, we're going to hold off and we're going to do what's right. And we're going to do a full spectrum study on the environment and on people because that's the right thing to do. And we give so much gratitude for you, Great Spirit, because you can transform anything and anybody into light, into love, into peace. It is already done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mother Earth. Thank you, Gaia. Thank you, the Ina that we work together with. We are so, so grateful. And so it is. So please do a testimonial. If you are, again, on a social media platform and you, ha you have reached a ton of people, let's do an interview. Let's make this happen. We're, we are bringing back, we are bringing in the new earth by doing what we know to be right, releasing the fear. They don't have any control over us. They have no power over us when we come together and unify together. We are, we, so much aloha sent to you guys. So much aloha, much love.